Wojak wakes up at 5 a.m. every day to get ready for work. He has to because he needs to look his best, get dressed up, prepare his breakfast and lunch, then drive an hour to get to work, and he has to make sure that he gets there at least 15 minutes early just in case something happens. Then he gets an hour-long lunch break, but he's so stressed out from being micromanaged by his boss that he just ends up working through lunch and spends a bunch of money on expensive coffee and snacks. Then, after a long day, he drives an hour home and spends even more money on gas. He's exhausted when he gets home and he only has the energy to sit in front of his screen watching Netflix while scrolling through his TikTok videos. Elon has a remote job, so he sleeps in until 7.30 and starts working at 8 a.m. while eating his breakfast. His boss isn't a micromanager and only cares about the quality of his work and doesn't care how he works. So he gets to play music while working and can even go to a cafe if he wants to. When he gets an hour-long lunch break, it's actually an hour and he's able to do errands whenever he needs to. He can also travel and go on vacation and his boss doesn't care as long as he reports for work and the work is good. Be like Elon, not like Wojak. Look, the world is not not what it used to be. 68% of people would prefer to work fully remote jobs, and 94% of people want to work remote or hybrid jobs. And at the same time, most employers say shifting to a flexible work model actually increases productivity. And this makes sense because employees are happier and employers don't have to pay for expensive office buildings. And since the whole <coughs> cough cough situation, getting a remote job has never been easier. And the first one on the list is going to be great for you if you're a member of the grammar police and you like pointing out other people's spelling mistakes mistakes. And that is going to be a healthcare documentation specialist. And this one is great for you if you want to work in the healthcare industry without ever having to see a patient. And healthcare documentation specialists are responsible for maintaining accurate and complete medical records and ensuring proper patient care and communication between medical providers. And they're kind of like the librarians of the medical world, organizing and maintaining vital information for the benefit of all. And they make about $52,000 a year. So some of the skills that you need to have for this are going to be attention to detail, strong communication skills, and a thorough understanding of medical terminology and documentation standards. Some of the pros of this one include the opportunity to work in the healthcare industry without direct patient care, while the cons include the need for constant attention to detail and focus. So as a healthcare documentation specialist, remember your work may go unnoticed, but without you, doctors would be scribbling on walls with crayons and patients would be receiving treatments for the wrong ailments. This one gets a seven out of 10 10 opportunity score. Next one on the list is going to be great for you if you want to develop your communication skills, set your own schedule, and earn commission for your hard work. And all of this without having to do a sales job where you talk to people on the phone. And that is going to be appointment setter. So in the sales industry, you have these two positions. One of them is the setter and the other one is the closer. And a lot of the time setters are going to be the people who are answering DMs, answering emails, and figuring out if inbound leads are going to be a good fit for whatever product you're selling. And in some cases, they'll also be doing prospecting. And then they'll be setting appointments for the closer who actually gets on the phone and sells the person the product. Now this one, according to Glassdoor, you make about $45,000 a year. But if you're in the right industry, I can almost guarantee you, you can make a lot more than this. I know appointment setters that make over six figures per year. And a lot of the time they're spending most of their days chatting with people in DMs and over email. So the pros of this one include flexibility, the potential for high commissions, and the opportunity to learn about sales. The cons of this one are going to include rejection and the repetitive nature of the job. So that is appointment setting. It may not be glamorous, but somebody's got to do it. Plus, it's a great way to hone your rejection coping skills when you inevitably get ghosted over and over again on Tinder. This one gets a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be great for you if you love numbers, organization, and making sure that everything adds up. And that's that's going to be a bookkeeper. Now, bookkeeping may not sound sexy, but it's the backbone of just about every business out there. Without it, companies are like penguins trying to fly, cute but doomed to fail. And bookkeeping involves recording financial transactions and keeping track of a company's financial records. And you might be thinking to yourself, Shane, isn't that what an accountant does? And don't you need to get an accounting degree and get certified in order to become a bookkeeper? No, absolutely not. You do not need to be an accountant to become a bookkeeper. You likely will be working with accountants if you become one, but you do not need to be an accountant and you definitely do not need to be a CPA or certified. Now, bookkeepers make about $42,000 a year. Now, some of the pros include the stability and reliability of the job, the ability to work remotely, and opportunities for growth. Some of the cons include potential for repetitive tasks and the need for strong attention to detail. So if you're a fan of numbers, spreadsheets, and keeping things in order, then bookkeeping might be a perfect career for you. Just remember to always carry a calculator and a healthy dose of patience. This one gets a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be great for you if you want to help business owners that are drowning in tasks. 
tasks. And that is going to be becoming a virtual assistant. And virtual assistants are kind of like superheroes that provide administrative support remotely, saving you time, energy, and the occasional existential crisis. And executive virtual assistants make about $56,000 a year. So some of the pros of this one include flexibility, variety, and the ability to work from anywhere. And that's actually something that a lot of gigabrains are doing right now where they're getting a job from the US and then they are working abroad in countries where you can live like a king on $1,500 a month. While some of the cons include isolation and the need to market yourself. So in a world of chaos and clutter, virtual assistants are the unsung heroes who keep the peace and tidy up the mess. This one gets a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Now the next one on the list is gonna be great for anyone who's ever wanted to be a car salesman, but also wants to sleep soundly at night. And that's going to be Medicare insurance sales. And this is where you're going to be helping seniors navigate the labyrinth of healthcare insurance. Now healthcare insurance in the US is a giant freaking mess. I could probably make an entire channel talking about healthcare and insurance in the US alone. And by properly helping seniors navigate this giant mess, you can save them thousands, tens of thousands, and even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And health insurance agents make about $61,000 a year according to Glassdoor. But you can make a lot more than this. In fact, there are many people making six figures and you can even make into these seven figures if you're working for the right company. So some of the pros of this one include a flexible schedule, the ability to work from home, and the potential for high earnings. Some of the cons of this one include a steep learning curve, a competitive market, and the emotional toll of dealing with seniors who are often in need. So if you want to help seniors, you have a heart of gold, and you have the patient of a saint, this one might be great for you. I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list might be for you if you're a connoisseur of content. That's right. If you're somebody who consumes a lot of content online and you think that you have a nice. refined taste, you might want to check out the job of content strategist. And a content strategist is responsible for creating and implementing a plan to produce and distribute content that is relevant, engaging, and valuable to a target audience. And content strategists are kind of like chefs, carefully selecting and combining the right ingredients to create a mouthwatering dish that leaves the audience wanting more. And content strategists make about $70,000 a year, according to Glassdoor. Now, this is another one where there is a ton of opportunity. I know content strategists on YouTube that make well into the seven figures per year. So some of the pros of being a content strategist are the ability to be creative, work remotely, and have a positive impact on a company's online presence. Some of the cons include the pressure to constantly produce high quality content and the need to stay up to date with ever evolving technology and platforms. This one gets an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. Now the next one on the list might be great for you if you want to make more money than a doctor without having to train for 20 years and be exposed to people's bodily fluids. And that is going to be high ticket sales. And high ticket sales is the art of selling high priced products and services. And a lot of the time you're going to be selling to business owners. And the reason for that is because a lot of the time the things you're going to be selling are going to be over $10,000. And there are a lot of consultants, coaches, and service providers that sell these high ticket services and products. Now, this is not for everybody, but if you can get good at the skill of sales, you're pretty much set for life. And if you look up high ticket sales on Glassdoor, you'll see they make about $118,000 a year on average. And the best high ticket salespeople can easily hit the seven figure mark as well. So the pros here include high earning potential, flexible schedules, and it can be done remotely. The cons here are that it can be a high pressure and stressful environment. It requires resilience and persistence. You're probably going to suck at it a lot at first, and it may require a long sales cycle. This one gets a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list might be great for you if you want to break into the healthcare industry and help it to keep running without ever having to leave your house. And that is going to be medical coding and billing. And basically, this is the process of translating medical procedures and diagnoses into codes for insurance billing purposes. And so you're almost like a translator that turns complex medical information into a language that insurance companies can understand. Now, this one, like most of the other ones on this list, is relatively easy to get into. It doesn't require a college degree or previous experience and you make on average about $41,000 a year. Some of the pros of this one include a high demand for workers, the ability to work remotely, and competitive pay. Some of the cons may include repetitive work and a lot of time sitting at a desk. This one gets an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, one of my videos that got the best feedback is the 13 remote jobs that do not require any experience and you can check that out by clicking right here.